Hi everyone, this is Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video I'm going to show you a trick by exploiting implicit ambiguity in Scala. I've named this video tongue-in-cheek anti-implicits with respect to the previous video anti-givens in Scala 3. Now, this video will be mostly applicable for Scala 2 programmers because I'm going to exploit a trick with implicits in Scala, and also this will work for early versions of Scala 3, which depending on when you're watching this video may very well be into the future. Now, the main assumption and the main prerequisite of this video is that you are familiar with how implicits actually work in Scala. As recommendations, as always, I'm going to ask you to code with me, and whenever you need to go back to this sort of of implicit trick, just refer back to this video or to the written form at the blog with the link in the description. All right. So depending on your experience with Scala implicits, you may very well know that implicits in Scala will allow you to enforce type relationships or even compute new types at compile time. So I'm going to illustrate that by an example. I also use this in the anti-givens video, which is specifically applicable for Scala 3. Now, I reckon that this particular trick that I'm going to show you here with implicits is probably going to be more interesting than that. Now, Scala 3 has explicitly banned this sort of mechanism that I'm about to show you, and I guess this will be even more tempting to learn, being the forbidden fruit. So here's an example. I'm going to define a method called process lists, which takes two type arguments A and B, and two lists, LA as a list of A's, an LB as a list of B, and this will return a list of tuples, A and B. And here I'm going to run a for comprehension, let's say A in LA, and then B in LB, I'm going to yield a tuple, let's say A and B. Now, for some reason, in your application, let's consider the fact that process list is some library code that you cannot really change. But you are interested in only making this process list method applicable for two types which are the exact same type. So one way that you can do that is to define a wrapper API, let's call this process lists same type, which takes only one type argument A, and takes an LA as a list of A's, and an LB still as a list of A's, and this will return a list of tuples. And uh, as an implementation, I'm going to simply call process lists on LA and LA. And in this case, the types A and B are always going to be the exact same type. Now, there are weird situations in library code when this sort of solution is not really possible. And rather, we would need to rely on determining the relationship between types A and B at compile time, rather making the compiler figure out if the types A and B are equal. So we often resort to a solution that looks something like this. I'm going to define a method called process lists same type. Let's call this version two. And this takes two type arguments A and B, an LA as list of A, an LB as a list of B, and this will return a list of tuples, so a list of tuples A and B. As an implementation, I'm going to say, you put the equal sign where it belongs, and process lists with LA and LB, so I'm calling the main API. But I'm going to add another argument list to this new method. And I'm going to have an implicit, and I'm going to name this evidence for lack of a better word or lack of a better name. And this type is a particular kind of instance, which is a equals colon equals with the type arguments A and B. Now, what is this type? This type takes two type arguments A and B. And in the Scala standard library, we have an implicit def, which I'm going to write in a comment. So we have an implicit def, which creates an equals colon equals for the same argument type, so A and A. So implicit def, let's call this same type, which takes a type argument A and returns a new instance of equals colon equals for two types which are the same as new whatever. 
Now, the interesting thing is that these instances of equals colon equals, which by the way can be used in fix, so A equals colon equals B, which is much more readable, these instances are only generated by the compiler by need if the types A and B are equal. So only if the types A and B are equal, then the compiler will create an implicit evidence to inject into this particular method. So if I do, for example, process list same time v2 with list 1, 2, 3, and list with 1, 2, 3, this will work because the type of the lists is integer and the compiler can generate an evidence of int equals int by this definition which I wrote in the comments. This belongs somewhere in the guts of the Scala standard library. But if I do process list same type v2 with lists, uh, let's say one, two, three, and a list of strings, for example, like Scala and Java, this will not work. So if I compile this code, then the compiler will not find an implicit instance to inject here for process list same type v2. So it cannot prove that int is equal to string. So this is a technique for enforcing the equality of two types at compile time whenever we want to actually invoke that generic method. So this will not work because implicit not found. Okay. So this is the kind of problem that implicit defs with this sort of types can actually solve. Now, I'm going to present a slightly more complex problem, which is the same as the one for anti-givens in the other video, which is, let's say that you have this process list API with two type arguments A and B. How can you enforce at compile time that the types A and B must be different not the same. So right now there's nothing preventing you from calling process lists on two lists of the same type. But we want the compiler to not compile our code if we do something like that. And the way that we can do that is by creating, let's call this a trait as not equal. So I'm going to create an equivalent not equal type for two generic types, so A and B. And because this has two type arguments, I can actually use it in fix. And I'm going to create a method, let's call this process different types. And I'm going to add two type arguments, A and B. And I'm going to have an LA as a list of A and an LB as a list of B. And I'm going to require an implicit evidence that A is not equal to B, so A equal not equal b. And this will return a list of tuples as before. And I'm going to simply call process lists with la and lb. But the compile time requirement is that a must not be equal to b. Now, how do we create implicit evidence of this sort of type? And the way that we can exploit implicit creation in Scala is by creating an implicit def. So I'm going to have an implicit def I'm going to call this not equal and EQ to type arguments A and B. And this will construct an evidence that A is not equal to B. So I'm going to say A not equal to B. And I can actually construct an instance of not equal with A and B. I can make this a class. I can make it whatever. I'm going to simply return null. I don't really care what instance this actually is. I only care that it exists. So we have an evidence for A not equal to B, but this doesn't really have any requirements for the relationships of A and B either. So I can, at this moment, call process different types with two lists of the same type. So I can call process lists different type with list with one, two, three, and another list with one, two, three. And this will also work but we don't want it to work. So if I try to recompile this application, then the code will compile just fine because the compiler can create an implicit evidence for int not equal to int in my definition. Now here's the thing, and this is the crux of the video. 
We want this particular call at line 31 on my screen to not compile, not because the compiler cannot find an implicit evidence of int not equal to int, but because the compiler can find too many implicit evidence instances for int not equal to int. So I'm going to write an implicit def, and I'm going to call this generate one with a single type argument. And I'm going to create an instance of a not equal to a and this will become null. I don't care what value this is. I only care that it exists. And I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it twice. So we have two implicit defs for a single type argument a that will create an instance of a not equal to a. Now at this point, if I call process different types on two lists of the same type, the compiler will try to find an implicit evidence for int not equal to int. And for that, it has not one, but two ready candidates to generate an implicit instance for int not equal to int. And so if I recompile this code, we will get a compiler error. So we have ambiguous implicit arguments. Both method generate one and method generate two can create an evidence for int not equal to int. That's how the compiler prioritizes implicit generation. It will prioritize generate one and generate two because the type a not equal to a is more specific than the type a not equal to b. And so we have an implicit ambiguity here for these two methods. So this will not compile any longer. Rather, if I do process different types with two lists of different types, let's say one, two, three, and list for, let's say, black and white, this will compile. So if I recompile the code, then this should be okay. So this is how you can exploit implicit ambiguity in the Scala compiler so that you can enforce some type relationships that you want at compile time. So Scala is an amazing language and there are a variety of tricks that you can employ to do basically whatever you want. I hope you liked this video and found the trick useful. If you did, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the Rock the JVM channel for more videos like this. Check me out on Twitter and LinkedIn for fresh updates on upcoming material. I have lots for you. And leave me feedback in the comments. I read every single one. Until next time, I'm Daniel signing off.